The U.S. saying it has now shot down a Syrian government jet. This happened yesterday near the ISIS stronghold of Raqqa after the warplane fired on U.S.-backed rebels. Pentagon says this is the first time in Syria's civil war that a U.S. pilot has struck a regime plane. The shootdown by the F-18 Super Hornet from the USS George H.W. Bush also appears to mark a new escalation in this conflict. And it follows a number of recent incidents against the regime and Iranian-backed forces by the U.S. military. Joining us now to talk about all of this is former U.S. intelligence officer Andrew Peake. Hey, Andrew. Great to be here. So this marks the first time coalition forces have struck a regime plane in Syria since the Civil War. How does this change things going forward? Well, I think it's a long overdue enforcement of some basic U.S. red lines in Syria. You know, I think from the moment of his inauguration when he became commander in chief, President Trump has made it clear that the U.S. will not only not tolerate chemical attacks, as we saw in his attack uh, against the regime for, for nacing Idlib province with that chemical attack in March, but also he, we won't tolerate attacks against our allies who are fighting ISIS. Defeating ISIS is the top priority of this administration, and rightfully so. And for too long, the Iranians and the Syrians and other uh, groups that are throwing in with the Syrian government have been able to attack our allies kind of without fear of retribution. Andrew, you know, this is interesting timing as we're in the middle of the Russia probe here in the U.S. What does this mean for our relationship with the Russians, in particular their backing of Syrian forces? Yeah, and this is the really interesting thing. I mean, from day one, this administration has pursued a far more hawkish line on Russia than the Obama administration, particularly in Syria, where, as you noted in your intro, it's taken several actions against the Russian-backed regime that directly contradict Russian, uh, Russian interests. So it, I think it means it, it puts the lie immediately to this idea that Donald Trump is somehow colluding with the Russians to get elected and then to pursue a pro-Russian policy. We've obviously set limits in, in the airspace. Can we expect more types of action by the U.S.? Yeah, absolutely. At some point, I think either the Iranians, most likely, or Russian aircraft are going to test some of our limits. Uh, you know, I think that could happen in the airspace uh, around Jordan in particular. Uh, I think that could happen with a terrorist uh, attack against U.S. forces in Iraq, where U.S. forces are fighting ISIS side by side with Iranian allies, these Shiite militias. Um, but I think there's serious constraints on them also, because right next door is Turkey, and Turkey and Russia have a long, hostile history that Russia probably doesn't want to get into a mix about. Hey, Andrew, we were speaking with you earlier about uh, this latest incident in London, but all of this, of course, tying together, as we've seen this uh, a massive amount of Syrian refugee population moving in particular into Paris and into London. Let's talk about this, because the terror threat seems to be more and more escalated in Western Europe, a direct result of what we've seen in Syria. Should Europeans be more on alert now, considering what we've just seen happen overnight? I think it would be tough, actually, to be more on alert than they already are. I, I mean, I, you know, this constant drumbeat of terrorist attacks uh, has kicked the UK's terror attack indicator up to the second highest. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised for the next couple of weeks it goes even higher. But I, I think it does point to the fact that this problem of terrorism in Western Europe is not solved by having more refugees come there. It's solved by creating a political solution in Syria that allows more people to stay at home. That's what makes people who are potential radicals stay in Syria, not go to Western Europe. The attack we saw in London last night was different than the other attacks that we've seen recently. Um, this van rammed through a crowd that was just finishing up worshiping at, at a mosque during the holy month of Ramadan. Your thoughts on how different this attack was? Yeah, it was terrible. Uh, it, no, it was terrible. Uh, it, and it certainly was different uh, in that it was an attack on the Muslim community uh, of worshipers outside the Finsbury Park Mosque uh, instead of uh, by radicals against uh, like a social or cultural gathering. Um, but I think it points to the need to enforce, uh, to increase our homeland security in the days to come. All right, Andrew, thank you for your perspective today. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you.